Let me show you how to change the color of anything in Photoshop, including objects that have colors that are too difficult to select. The goal is to turn anything that is blue in this image into a golden brown color. And as you can see, there's a lot of challenging areas. For example, we have a blue ball that has green plants in front of it. We have pillows. We have ambient color that is blue under the chairs. There's a lot going on. So the colors will be challenging to select, but I'm going to show you a really powerful technique that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Some of the things that I cover in this tutorial may be a little advanced, but that's okay. I'm going to deliver them in small digestible chunks so that you can follow along even if you are a beginner. So make sure to rewind if you get stuck and also make sure to click on that like button if you see something that you enjoy or that you think will help you in your workflow. Clicking on the like button really helps out the channel with the YouTube algorithm, so I would really appreciate it if you did. All right, let's jump right into the tutorial. First, I'm going to go into the new adjustment layer icon and I'm going to select hue and saturation. Then from the properties panel, I can adjust the hue of this image, which is the colors. I'm shifting the hue in degrees, but this is not going to work because I'm changing the colors of the entire image. I want to target my color change to just the blues. So I'm going to reset the layer and I'm going to click on this icon and watch what happens when I click on the blue couch. Two things happen. First of all, the drop down is now set to blues because I clicked on a blue couch and the gradient is showing that I'm targeting the blue pixels. So now when I shift my hue, I only target the blue. But unfortunately, this is not enough to get the golden color that I'm going for. I need to add to the targeted colors and I can add by clicking on this icon, the add to sample button, the eyedropper with the plus icon. When you click on that, you can click over your image and notice how now I'm adding to that color change. And from the gradient, you can see that I'm targeting a much wider range of blues. But unfortunately, that doesn't do the job. Notice that I didn't get all the blues in the shadows here in the couch. I also have some banding issues and some artifact issues on the walls. And I have other small imperfections. The best way to avoid all these imperfections, including the banding and the dark areas in the couch, is by using the colorize feature. If I enable the colorize feature, all the banding and those problems go away. I can apply the color that I have selected to the entire image. The problem now becomes that my targeting is gone. I'm now doing a global adjustment. So that is not the solution. The solution is a combination of the two to include the targeting and to colorize the image. So how can I combine the two? Well, you can combine them by using a layer mask and we're going to make a layer mask in a very interesting way. And that is the whole point of this tutorial. I'm going to select the room layer and I'm going to press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac, and I'm going to drag it up to the layer on top. Next, I'm going to change the blending mode to difference. And this blending mode is going to make all the magic happen. The difference blending mode looks at the layer that you're on and the layers below. If the pixels are exactly the same color, they will turn black. If not, they will change to a different color. In this case, magenta. The color doesn't matter. The important thing is that the pixels that are the same are black. Remember, in a layer mask, black conceals and white reveals. So I think you see where I'm going here. I'm going to turn this into a mask so that the areas that are black are not affected and the areas that are bright are affected. And I can control this as a regular layer mask. Let me show you how to do that. With the channels panel, you can click on any individual channel and see which one has the most contrast between the things you want to keep and the things that you don't. The red channel and the blue channel in this case are closed, but I think the blue channel has more contrast. So I'll hold control on Windows, command the Mac and click on this channel to make a selection. You can see the marching ants on the brighter areas. I'm going to click on RGB to bring back the composite view and go back into the layers panel. I no longer need this room copy layer, so I'll click and drag it into the trash icon. What I'm going to do now is delete the layer mask and I'm going to create a new mask by clicking on the new layer mask icon and that will take the selection and apply it as a mask. So now I can go into the colorize feature and set this to my golden brown 
and adjust the mask accordingly so that I only target the bright areas. Again, the things that I was not targeting before are black, which is why they're not being affected, like the plants, pillows, and lamps. If I hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the Layer Mask thumbnail, you can see that those are black, so they're not being affected. Again, Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click again on the Layer thumbnail to bring back the original view. And if I go into Image, Adjustment, and Levels, I can control the brightness of the mask. If I make the mask brighter, it'll make it white. White reveals. So we're going to reveal the effect. So I'm going to click and drag on this point and drag it to the left. And notice how I'm revealing the effect. See that? I'll press OK. And this is just a regular layer mask. So that means that I could take advantage of the dodge and burn tools. The dodge tool makes things brighter. So if I make things brighter on a mask, it reveals. So I'm revealing the coloring effect. See that? And I'm not affecting the plant because the plant was already black to begin with. So I'm only targeting the midtones. See that? Not the shadows. So the midtones. So I'm just making these areas brighter, like so. And I can continue dodging my image until I get the result that I want. And also, you can paint with the brush tool. So I'll zoom into the problem area we had earlier here. So with the brush tool, I can paint with white to reveal. So now I can reveal the color on those areas like you see here. So this is much easier than starting a layer mask from scratch. And now I'm 100% certain that I am affecting those colors and it gives me the total control that the sliders were not giving me. This is a fantastic technique as you see there. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. I can go back and adjust the hue and saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the thumbnail and I can bring down the saturation, adjust the hue accordingly to get the right color that I want. Notice that the plants look fantastic, the pillows look great, and also the reflection here on the glass. And of course, the colorization looks great. Even the ambient color below the couches and chairs look fantastic. Of course, you will need to fine tune either using the brush tool to paint black and white to hide and reveal the effect, or use the dodge and burn tools. Again, the dodge tool makes things brighter and the burn tool makes things darker. And this is my result after spending just a few minutes fine tuning the mask using the same techniques I showed you a moment ago. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you learned something, make sure that you click on that thumbs up button. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, make sure that you click on that subscribe and notification button so that you don't miss any future Photoshop tutorials. My name is Jesus Ramirez. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to speaking to you again very soon.